fifth grade students at uh, Zemin Elementary School in Lincoln, Nebraska, recently sent home with a flyer outlining how they should handle bullies. The instructions apparently deemed so ridiculous by parents that the school district quickly issued an apology for the, quote, inaccurate information. What was the inaccurate information? The nine rules for dealing with bullies. Rule number three, do not be afraid. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, all right. That's not a problem. Okay, that's good. That's good. Isn't that the whole point of a bully? Yeah, let me start at rule number one. Refuse to get mad. Okay. Anger is a feeling that we have toward our enemies, not our buddies. When you get angry, you're treating them like an enemy. Besides, if a bully finds out that they can get you angry, you become their puppet and the bully controls you. I actually agree with that. I'm waiting for Pat mm -hmm. to... Um, <clears throat> to what? Not to comment on that. Uh, no, I don't feel strongly about that one way or the other. Really? Mm -hmm. Not at all? No. Not at all. Not a at guy all. who, a guy who, you know, kind of understands. I could go the scripture route, but why don't I go the Yoda route? <laughs> <laughs> guy who understands that doesn't feel okay. All right. Yeah. The treat person uh, who about is about anger. You talking about? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh -huh. fear leads to anger. Anger leads it's to hate. Hate leads, leads to suffering. suffering. Just saying. Is that for the book of Yoda? Yes, it's it is the uh, fourth chapter. Rule number rule verse number, of the book of Yoda. Rule number two, uh, two: treat the person who is mean to you as if they are trying to help you. <laughs> you know, uh, how does that work? Understand that, Jeffy? One, when I, we're uh, trying to help you with your fatness, we're trying to help you, Jeffy. Uh, so we're trying to do. We're trying to help you. No matter how insulting or mean they sound, be grateful and think they really care about you. <laughs> That's, that's the worst stupid. advice I've yeah, ever heard. That's just plain stupid. Wait, so if you fool yourself into believing they care about you while they're abusing you, that's going to mm -hmm. help them. Who wrote yeah. these help things? Mm -hmm. Number three, don't be afraid. Fear is something we feel towards enemies, not buddies. When you're afraid, you're treating a bully like an enemy. If you're afraid, you automatically uh, are putting the bully in the strongest position, and you automatically lose. And since the bully wants to keep winning, they'll continue to do things that make you feel afraid. Plus, I actually kind of agree with the last sentence. In addition to all of that, mm -hmm. fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yoda 4 5. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's exactly rule right. number four do not verbally defend yourself. <laughs> Don't verbally defend yourself. So you can't verbally or physically, I think, in this thing, defend no, yourself. No, you can't, no. Okay. There is that thing, uh -oh. though, where, and, and I understand kind of where they're going there if they're going this way, which is if you sit there and get all pissed off and scream back at someone who's doing this, rarely does that do you any good. Like, I mean, you're you're more like a better defense system is to sit there and play along with it and make fun of yourself, and yeah. it, it winds up working out better. Maybe that's what they're going for. We defend enemies. We defend ourselves from enemies. So we're treating the other person as an enemy, not a friend. They're not a friend. Yeah, they are not a friend. But Glenn, you're trying to make them a friend. Why are you? Yeah, that's oh, that's trying to make for the love of Pete. When one person attacks and the other person is the defender, the attacker is in a stronger position. So the defender is automatically the loser, and we defend. If we defend, we lose. Mm. Who wrote this? <laughs> uh, um, Did we defend ourselves against the uh, Japanese and the Nazis? And I believe so, and I think we won. World War II. Oh, really I thought sure. we could have taken another path. I mean, I would say what I would do with this is send it directly to Israel. You know what? Yeah. You get a couple of missiles you. that land in your in your Thank you. territory. Don't get, don't get mad. Don't get angry. Don't get mad. Are you don't defend claiming, yourself. Are you claiming that Israel is surrounded by a bully of some sort? I certainly, what most certainly, am not. Hater, am not by any means. Uh, rule number five: Do not attack. We attack enemies and not friends. Ah, so see? this is really hey, the same advice on every, everything. Every single. They're not your friend. <laughs> <sighs> If you attack back, I am treating you like the enemy, and the the bully will return and treat you like an enemy. Uh huh. Isn't he doing that it already? It takes two people to fight. No, no, it doesn't. So the uh, so it is no. the person. Mm -hmm. It's the person who retaliates or responds that it, actually starts the fight. 
A bully can hit you in the face. <laughs> no it way. Is, yes, that's what it says. <laughs> it is the person who retaliates or responds that actually starts the fight. So we started oh my 9-11. What? Hold on just a <laughs> second. Sure. Hang on just a second. Uh, yes. Yes. So they wow. knocked down our buildings, but since we went we and started, bombed them, yes. that was what so started the fight. So here's the thing. Wow. Here's the thing. I'm just channeling a phrase that I have heard before. Woe unto them that teach that evil is good and good is evil. Oh, it's a book of Yoda. I know. It's a, what is that, 612? Uh, somewhere Yoda in there. Yoda 612. Yeah. Rule number six. If someone physically hurts them, uh-huh. just show you are hurt, but do not get angry. Nothing okay. shuts a bully down by more than just showing that they're winning really uh-huh. really. C- c- if convincing. you start crying. Yeah. If someone oh, hurts you, you need to feel sorry and apologize. You want them to be sorry and apologize. If you get angry, they won't feel sorry. Exactly. So you just curl up in a ball and cry. Mm-hmm. And I think curling up in a ball is too much because that's protecting yourself. I think you should sit there and kind of sprawl out. Yeah, that's the thing. Rule number seven in the woe, uh, woe <laughs> unto thee that teaches good is evil and evil is good. You go to 612. Rule number seven, don't tell on bullies. <laughs> The number one reason bullies hate their victims is because their victims tell on them. Mm-hmm. If they didn't bully people, they wouldn't be told on in the first place. So how did all this get well, started? Wait, 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 wait. This is great. Listen to this advice because it rule it, it violates rule number six and seven. Telling on a bully makes the bully want to retaliate. Yeah, but, you, but I thought the one that you're not supposed to retaliate. So why is, that, that is makes he retaliating? The one who retaliates is the one who actually started the fight. I learned that in, in rule number five. <laughs> uh, tell an adult only when real injury or crime, theft of something valuable has occurred. Would we keep our friends if we tattled on them? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, again, I, I, the bully's not your friend. Who wrote this? Rule bully, number eight. You know, there's some bullying association, like the actual like represent, representatives of, of the, the bullies. bullies. They're yeah, just like, oh, like, this is what we need in schools. Bully unions. <laughs> I'm in bully bully union one one five. Bully unions a little bit uh, a little bit redundant. Number eight. <laughs> <laughs> number eight. Don't be a sore loser. No one likes a sore loser. Would you play a game with somebody who gets all upset when they lose? Mm, lose no. gracefully and be a good sport. Please Kids say, will like you better. Please tell me it was lose gracefully and not gratefully. Oh, yeah, it is grateful, oh. gracefully. Okay. Sorry. Um, uh, <laughs> but in today's world, it could be. <laughs> Thank you so much for kicking my ass. Rule number nine. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is so compressed and it's a, it's a, it's a, like a, a, it's like a mimeograph. It's not even, it's not even a good <laughs> shot of it. It's, it's, it actually smells like a mimeograph. Rule number nine, learn to laugh at yourself and not get hooked by put downs. Make a joke out of it. For example, if you think I'm ugly, you should see my sister. <laughs> I do think this is a successful tactic. <laughs> that is. I it mean, is. That, it, it does, does work. work. It actually does work. That's the, that's the only decent advice given in the whole thing. If you can pull it off. It, it might piss them off even more, and they might just keep smashing you in the face. But uh, if you can pull it off, it does work. Sometimes. I don't think that works with actual bullies. It works with people that, like, it's what Jeffy does. We, you know, we call him the worst person on earth, and then he mm-hmm. convinces us he's actually worse than we thought. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. uh, that's the way yes. to to disarm that. Like, of course, we keep doing it, but it's still the way to disarm him. That's why we talk about our fatness all the time, so that people won't bully us by calling us fat when they see us on TV. <laughs> <laughs> we you already, guys are the ugliest we already disarmed TV. you, okay? Yeah, it's like yeah, we we're the ugliest, that. fattest people right. you've ever seen in so your life. We already <laughs> said that. This is I'm seriously, I learned this when I was thirteen years old. <laughs> mm-hmm. And being radio because everybody would always go, Oh, you don't look anything like you sound. Anything like you sound. So I realized if I just say, Oh, I'm a horrible horrible <laughs> Gila monster <laughs> mm-hmm. people always instead of saying that, they always are like Oh, oh, you're not as bad as you as bad say. As you say. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yes. <laughs> yeah, right. All of a sudden, you're kind of like Tom Cruise because they have been thinking you're Phantom of the Opera the yeah. whole time. Yep. <laughs> so it's like, you know what? 
You're not as bad. And to show our dedication to our audience, we've worked hard over several decades to make ourselves look worse and worse. So that we're telling yeah, so the truth we, on So here. they start so. to match up. Yeah. <laughs> My goal is to have people start to say, wow, you're exactly like I pictured. <laughs> See, I'm truthful to the audience. That's right. I ain't lying to you, baby, when I said I'm an ugly heel monster. Wow. Look away, children. Look away. <laughs> So after seeing a parent's reaction to the flyer, Lincoln Public Schools issued an apology on his Facebook page. As noted in the abetted Facebook post above, the school linked to another worksheet on bullying. I mean, that's, that's as dumb a worksheet as I've, I've ever seen. I, 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 seriously, it is not... <laughs> one, of the on the, one of the comments on the Facebook page is, Sorry, this is not a learning opportunity. This is a show of complete incompetence. 1970 called. They want their flyer back. <laughs> um, this is this is just this. Th- honestly, this would make me question everything. Yeah, Who, you, do you want your your kids going to this school? No, I mean because somebody. No. It's it's not like it's like, hey, who left this joke sheet in the copy machine and then and somebody accidentally hit print and then it all flew into the hands of the children how many people's hands did this have to go through how many people who printed it who folded it who brought it to the teachers how many teachers looked at it and said okay kids and you have to have how many hands did this go through before it got to the students and nobody said anything yeah pretty hard to believe I, I, the one that's the most amazing to me is that if you retaliate, you started it. Yeah, that's awesome. What is what is that NFL football rule? Because <laughs> because the guy who retaliates is always the one caught by the referee. Is that I, uh, that's the only thing I can think of? Yeah, that makes any sense with this is maybe the teacher sees you retaliate and so you get in trouble. How can you not be able to defend yourself? That's not starting it. I like that's the, crazy. They're examples of the 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 comebacks. So if someone says to you, "Hey, you're ugly," and you said, as you brought up, uh, if you think I'm ugly, you should see my sister. Uh, <laughs> Which is a, you're making fun of. Uh, your don't, sister. I don't want to. I mean, it's hurting honestly, your family. It's hurting your family. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm currently yes. at home trying to teach my children how to respect each other, and that you only have family left in the end. I got news for you, kids. In the end. We're all you've got. <laughs> you, yeah, and it goes on. That's, another- that's why you should say, instead of your sister, <laughs> if you think I'm bad, you should see my fat, dumpy, stupid mom. Well, no, <laughs> I mean, you're joking. That old man. says it about the dad. You're joking. The last one is, if you think I look like a nerd, you should see my dad. My gosh. You're teaching. See, that your, is unbelievable. You're, te- you're coming unbelievable. after dads? Now, if I say that, <laughs> if I say that to my kid, I'm fine with that. If I go yeah. to Rafe and I say... Rafe, just say this. You think I'm bad? You see my dad. That's one thing Mm -hmm. because that's dad saying it's okay in this particular situation to say that. But I don't even know if that's okay. I don't. We 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 as a society take down, especially dads, all the time. Yeah. Can we? Can we just? I mean, being a dad is not an easy job. I know. Being a mom. Blah 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 blah. Women, 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 mom, 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 I got it. I don't think you actually uh, <laughs> Well, I kind of, I don't, but I kind of do. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to denigrate moms yeah. or women or anything like that. But can we just, can we as a society, I mean, how many of us have gone on Father's Day? We go to church or whatever on Father's Day. On Mother's Day, the world stops. Mm-hmm. On Father's Day, it's like, Dad, pass the bread. <laughs> I know. Happy Father's Day. I mean, really, there's like we had no respect at all. Our society and our culture makes it used to be father knows best. Now it's like dad who? That's true. I mean, I, mm-hmm. in comparison to mothers, of course, mothers are get get the uh, he she's never and Romney's never worked a day in her life treatment too. So I do obviously no, no. understand that. You no, know, I know it's that. nice to stand up for both. But you're right. No one stands up for dads. No one stands up for dads. Can we stop bashing dads and stop bashing men? You know, there's a there's a there's a problem in our society. Men do not behave like men because we don't ever expect them to. We don't ever expect them to be uh, chivalrous. We never expect them to be decent. We never expect them to be smart. Why would anybody grow up to be smart? Look at the way men are always portrayed in everything. Why would we expect them to have honor? Look at the way that they're portrayed. They're never portrayed in a, in a way that makes you say, I want to be that man. I want to be that guy. There's no heroes anymore. 
even in sports and everything else, there's no heroes. Let's stop. Let's. What do you say? We stop bashing men for the love of Pete. And if somebody says that, if my school said, how are my grandmother was from Nebraska, Nebraska. My grand, you want my grandmother to come back and punch you in the face? <laughs> what has happened to Nebraska? How could this possibly happen? We should ask our two senatorial candidates from Nebraska today. Oh my about gosh, we do have them on, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we have yeah. two of them today. Ben Sass and Shane Osborne are on with us. We should ask both of them. I'd like to see their reaction to this. Which one are we for? I think they're both good, actually. I mean, yeah, they're both good. Uh, the, the, supposedly, uh, there's some tie-in with uh, Osborne to uh, McConnell and his group. Uh, we can ask him about that and yeah, see, because yeah, we, we liked to. him a lot when we talked to him We liked him a lot, and, but I liked also him like uh, Ben Sass. We liked, yeah, we liked him our, both. Our doctor has been a Ben Sass guy, and he's, a, he, and he's the one who said to me, you got to have Ben Sass on, because we had Shane Osborne on. And he said, you got to have Ben Sass on. He's great. So we did. Mm-hmm. Thanks to Grant Beckham, doctor, and I expect him to now say doctor. doctor. But uh, uh, free medical treatments out of that. I mean, what's the <laughs> I, free packs of uh, pill, bag of pills? Uh, yes. Okay, good. So the first candidate that answers, do you think I'm bad? You should see Massachusetts win. <laughs> yes. <laughs> isn't that isn't that the government strategy? Isn't that the president's strategy? <laughs> Yeah, well, unemployment, at least it's not 74.4.1. <laughs> here is our uh, here's our sponsor. It's AMAC. You think we're bad? You should see AARP. <laughs> AARP sucks. Do we need to say any more? As hard as you possibly can, mm-hmm. and they don't get up for 15 minutes. Yeah, right in the solar plexus. Bam! Hard as you can. That's what you did. Use your is- knuckle. Put your fist right that's what, dig it right up there in the solar plexus, and they won't breathe for about 10 minutes. And that's what you... Perfect. I did that in seventh grade. Worked like a charm. Bob Chilton. We can call him and ask him. How do you feel today? Have you recovered from that yet? You guys became Shot, good friends, 40 years right? Ago? Yeah, we actually did. Yeah. After you hit him in the solar plexus. Yeah. Of course, today, that same kid would reach into his locker and shoot you dead with a Glock, but... Right. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Come here. I want to improve our relationship. Come over here. I'm going to hit, hit you the solar so hard plexus. The solar plexus. <laughs> I almost, like, you won't breathe you for will about... give you such a hit from you. That's really scary. Oh, I'm about to <laughs> slap you in the next week. This is the Glenn Beck Program.